or what I can I use the word septoid here in action to go back to my first point. And I use the word quote unquote septoid here. I'm gonna start by presenting a couple of cases that I was consulted on, and then at the end, I'm gonna make a summary by emphasizing on the critical points that I think pertinent to the case. So the first case that I'm gonna present is a lady, a 54 years old, oh, sorry, a male, a 54 year old male who presented with fevers in large cervical and one of lymph nodes for four months. And then he had a lymph node biopsy done in the uh, middle of August 2009, which revealed an angioplasty T cell lymphoma. And then his other symptoms, including cough for about a month. Then, unfortunately, he was admitted a week later after he was diagnosed with a fever, cough, and worsening dyspnea.
then get first cycle chemotherapy. Before the second chemotherapy, the infiltration cleared up, and then later on come back again with the recurrent infiltrates. So what's going on right now? H1 in one? I don't know what the diagnosis. So I think what everything's put together is the eosinophilic pneumonia. Because why? His clinical and chest X-ray improved after the steroid in the chemotherapy regimen. And it's getting worse again before the next cycle of the chemotherapy when the maybe the steroid effects have wearing off. He has a persistent persistenophilia. And his transbronchial valves show prevascular in edema with the eosinophilic infiltrate. So the eosinophilic pneumonia by itself is already rare enough. But in the setting of the lymphoma test, it's even rarer. I couldn't find only like three case series or test reports on the PubMed. And they exist. And the eosinophilic pneumonia and the lymphoma, they exist. So I decided to treat the patient with the prednisolone one milligrams per kilo a day and then taper over six months. His subsequent chest x-ray each month is still clear. He's still alive to today, although his lymphoma is quite resistant. But he's not never been unhappy again. 